We're learning important new information about a deadly bank robbery that happened on Vancouver Island last summer. Police say the two suspects weren't targeting the bank at all, but instead they wanted a shootout with police. The two individuals were isolated from society and harboring deep-seated resentment and anger towards authority. The individuals had been plotting an act of extreme violence since at least 2019 and we're fully prepared for the consequences. So we're joined now by CBC's Sarah Galashin. Uh, Sarah, uh, you were watching that press conference too. Uh, what did you see out of it that stood out for you? Well, in that clip, Hannah, that you just played, I think that was a big takeaway. The fact mm -hmm. that this is something that uh, these two brothers, Matthew and Isaac Actorloni, had been planning and had been in the works since at least uh, 2019, is what we heard at that press conference, unbeknownst to their family as well, unbeknownst to police, that this was something that, that was in the work that police say that the, the pair they have uh, learned through their investigation had a, a deep-seated resentment against government, against uh, authority, police. Um, they were outraged by restrictions uh, of uh, that are placed on uh, purchase of body armor and of weapons, of um, weapons, pardon me. <clears throat> but they did obtain both, amassing a, a significant uh, arsenal. There were some uh, 36 explosive devices and uh, 3,500 rounds of ammunition found in the trunk of the white Toyota Camry that they had purchased just days before June 28th. Uh, and it was uh, nearby the scene of that bank. Uh, Investigators have determined, as as you pointed out there at the top there, that their intent was to shoot and kill police officers, as many as possible. Uh, that originally they had planned to carry this out in mid-2023, uh, but they, they moved up the date to uh, the June 28th, uh, 2022, when they learned that they were going to have to move out of their home and wouldn't be able to move this significant arsenal of weaponry that they had uh, amassed uh, to another location without causing suspicion. And so at Saanich, we were told, was not a target. It was just a, an opportunity to create this confrontation with police. And that is uh, what happened. Uh, and police who were on the scene responding to these calls of a bank robbery that came in at 11.02 realized as they were surrounding the, the bank that this was the intent of those who were inside because uh, surveillance camera has subsequently shown that they were coming out to the foyer, checking to see what police had to come around, that there was a perimeter police had set up. And that confrontation is what uh, this pair got when they came out of that uh, bank at 1118. Um, there is the surveillance footage that we have heard from investigators that shows uh, them holding a semi-automatic wrap automatic weapon up at a white van uh, full of uh, the ERT, emergency response team members. There were seven in that van in total. They threw open the, the door, throwing out a flashbang to try and distract what was happening. But then there was this incredible gunfire that was exchanged between the two. And the, the two uh, bank robbers, uh, both killed uh, by police bullets. Uh, one of them hit three times, the other nine times. Six officers were injured, none of them killed. But I want to play you a little bit of what uh, the witness cameras picked up. And there were, set four, set, pardon me, 52 sources of video that were uh, part of this investigation. But here is one uh, obtained by CBC. And it is graphic, but I mean, what I have just described is pretty graphic. What it does, though, is show you just what it is these police officers were up against. Oh, my God, Holy dude. Oh my god. We are witnessing a bank Holy robbery. Holy f Holy f Now, Sarah, were there any red flags that were missed that could have prevented this in the first place? Yeah, the police at this press conference say that they have looked over that, but that no, that there were no markers uh, that this was something that was being planned. As I say, the family was unaware and police, these these two were unknown to police and no, um, no markers that could have been flagged ahead of time. There are, uh, you know, there are psychological teams within uh, law, law enforcement which do watch for these things, but this... In hindsight, when they come through it all, there was nothing that could have alerted them to it. Uh, the fact that the police response was as strong as it was, that it involved emergency response team members uh, right off the get-go, really was a fluke because the ERT just happened to be in that area of Saanich on an unrelated matter when the 911 calls came in, as I say, around 11.02 in the morning. Um, as for those police officers, I talked about the fact that uh, six of them were shot, some of them receiving significant life-threatening injuries. We were told that it's 
through grit, perseverance, inner strength that they have pushed through this, but that there are also injuries that are invisible, uh, psychological injuries, and that within the Sandwich Department alone, five officers have yet to be able to return to work because of what happened uh, last June. Uh, but the intent, and this was pointed out by at this press conference, the intent was to kill as many officers as possible. That did not happen. Um, and as well, you saw that footage of the gunfire. It, it, it is absolutely clear that uh, certainly civilians could have been caught in that, and they weren't. Uh, civilians were protected in this, and no police officers did die. And what we heard from the police department is that that is how they are choosing to remember what happened on June 28th, um, trying to, to keep that memory of the success that they experienced that day uh, in, in the forefront. Hannah? Yeah, for sure. Uh, CBC's Sarah Galashin, thank you for breaking it all down. You bet.